Rob Bro. He's your sports bro at KKAM.com and the Talk 1340 app. You guys are not doing any pass blocking. You're just stepping aside and letting them walk in. Pop, 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 pop. That's what I want. All of you around that ball. What's wrong with y'all? Don't play like some little girls. Y'all like y'all never played football before. He calls them nothing. You hear me? They please just like we do. Yes, yes, sir. They sweat just like we do. Do you hear me? They went through two days. We went through two days in 110 degree heat. Yes, sir. I want you to hit everything to move. If the ref gets in your way, you hit him. Okay, then, let's play. But that team, us too. That gives us two. This is our team. This is us. Let's go right now. Let's get it off now. Let's go. Welcome to the Rob Bro Show. I am Rob Bro. I'm the host. You are the co-host. I need your help today. You can text in 806-855-3712. It is Overreaction Monday. You can send in all your overreactions from the NFL weekend. Super wild card weekend. 806-855-3712. More overreactions on what might happen tonight. Overreactions on the Chargers debacle. Overreactions on this being Tom Brady's last game in Tampa Bay. Is the Tampa Bay rumors swirling to an end? All of that and more today on the Rob Bro Show. Talk 103.9 News, Money, Sports. As always, it's a solo show. It's extra solo today. But we will have you join in 806-855-3712 on the text line as we get going. Some news from Texas Tech Basketball. They tweet out earlier today, need you in our corner tomorrow night. That is against Baylor Tuesday night. Wear white and let's defend our house. The Texas Tech Red Raiders got to 29 straight home wins and lost two straight after that so they are in a two game losing streak from what was happening before to now they're also on a five game conference losing streak they are 0 and 5 in the Big 12 losing to Texas this weekend overreaction monday this team's about to go on a run they're due right you cannot possibly lose every Big 12 game. You, it's just mathematically wrong that Texas Tech will go over in Big 12 play. Baylor is a spot. Baylor also not playing well. Baylor also underachieving. If Jerome Tang had beaten TCU in Fort Worth this weekend, I would have prepared my statement to say it's always been Jerome Tang. Scott Drew's washed. That didn't happen. Jerome Tang got beat by 20 against TCU this weekend. TCU looks really good. I kept trying to tell y'all early in the year that that Southern game, Texas Southern game, was an anomaly for TCU, that they were actually a good team. People kept tweeting at me, Oh, TCU stinks. They lost. Well, do they stink now? They might be the best transition basketball team in the country. It's amazing what happens when you have three, four, five guys who have played together, play together for multiple years. It's almost like that style of basketball is good for you. Instead of completely revamping a roster every single year, that has to get tiring for everyone involved. Uh, and it certainly has worn on the Texas Tech basketball program, in my opinion. Back to the text line today, 806-855-3712. We can continue anything we were talking about on the Raiderland. This, the Cowboys need a better quarterback more than they need a different coach right now. Yeah. In some ways, though, it's easier to get a new coach than a new ca- uh, quarterback. This off the text line, Kyler was good because he played on the best football team in the country in high school at the time. Never lost. 
He also played on a very talented OU team. Lost very few times. He's very pedestrian when he forced to get on his tippy toes and throw the ball over the line. Now, he's always been short. The offensive lines have always been taller than him, but he's always been able to play outside of the offense good enough to eliminate needing to play inside the offense. He just can't do that anymore. Life has finally caught up to Kyler Murray. You knew it would happen. Back on the text line, just a thumbs up. Uh, I don't know what that means. Just, hey, thumbs up, man. Thumbs up to you, too. Overreaction Monday, Texas State men's basketball will win the next 11 games. Love you from Grande Pollo. Love you, too, big chicken. Uh, 11? I need to look at the schedule. That would be awesome. That would certainly be something that happened. I, I, I don't know if it will. Um, uh, let's win the next one first. Overreaction Monday, Texas Tech can beat Baylor. I mean, that feels that feels like a not a lock, but that feels really good. Overreaction Monday, Fardaz Amac changes this team in a good way. And I was one of those people that said, yeah, you know, is he going to change anything? He's just one man. But playing 30 minutes off a broken foot with really no chance to do anything otherwise, that speaks highly of what he does and can do. And He's one of those guys that looks really slow and then gets by anybody down low that he wants to. And Texas is pretty good defensively and really good offensively. And as much as he kind of looked out of place at times defensively, he didn't really look out of place offensively except for maybe the Miss Dunk and the Miss Bunny that you kind of just, well, he hasn't played basketball in a long time. And you can shoot with a broken foot all you want from the perimeter and, and get a lot of practice and get a lot of shots up, but you can't really move around and dunk and shoot in the paint and get used to that with a broken foot. So go through the Big 12 schedule. You lose at TCU by six, lose by three at home to Kansas, lose in overtime at home to Oklahoma, and you lose on the road against Iowa State, on the road against Texas. To win the next 11, you would have to win at home against Baylor, win on the road in the Octagon of Doom, and then beat Baylor at home. Uh, sorry, West Virginia at home. Let's just go in three-game sections. Baylor, Kansas State, West Virginia. In my opinion, all winnable games. I know, but it's overreaction Monday, so just stay with me. Then you play at LSU. Winnable game. Then you get Iowa State at home. Winnable game. Then you go to the Farrell Center. Stay with me. Winnable game. Oklahoma State, winnable. Then you play Kansas State at home. Every home game for Texas Tech is winnable. Then you go to... Uh, you get Texas at home, winnable. At West Virginia, winnable. At Oklahoma, winnable. TCU at home, just like I said, winnable. And then in Lawrence. Maybe that's the only game when you're like, eh, yeah, you're probably not winning in Lawrence. So as much as you're struggling, as much as you're 0-5 in the Big 12, on overreaction Monday, let's just go ahead and lock in the next 11 as wins. Why not? All right, we'll take the break here. When we come back, more Rob Bro Show, more off the text line, more overreaction Monday. It is a weekend after the... The NFL playoffs, lots to talk about there, too. Uh, why have the Cardinals not fired their head coach? That's my overreaction. We'll talk about that when we come back. It's the Rob Rocho Talk 103.9 News, Money Sports. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Rob Rocho Talk 103.9 News, Money Sports. 
A big NFL weekend last weekend still going is the NFL weekend as the Dallas Cowboys play tonight. By the way, have I told you how much I hate Monday night football games in the playoffs? It's stupid. When, if the Cowboys win tonight, they have short rest going forward the rest of the playoffs. Uh, when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers win tonight, uh, they'll also have short rest. We'll see how it goes. The San Diego Los Angeles Chargers fired Anthony Lynn last year. Anthony Lynn went 9-7, and 12-4, 5-11 when he had Tyrod Taylor and a punctured lung Justin Herbert. And then he went 7-9. and nine. In 2020, with lots of extenuating circumstances, if you can imagine the year 2020 in that respect. So they fired him after that and went and got Brandon Staley. Since then, Brandon Staley with Justin Herbert, with Bosa, with Derwin James, with all of these players that the San Diego Los Angeles Chargers have. Went nine and eight in twenty twenty one and ten and seven this year with a playoff loss. A brutal, ridiculous, dead playoff loss where the Jacksonville Jaguars came back from like thirty two twenty billion points down to win in the second half. And Unfortunately, Trevor Lawrence and uh, Doug Peterson look like a good duo. Is Justin Herbert a good leader? Is Brandon Staley a good leader? Is Joey Bosa a good leader? Because these guys are out here caping for their head coach. Or are the Chargers just that franchise? They have been. They have been for a long time. They're the... They're the guys who get close and can't finish. And I'm saying this as a Dallas Cowboys fan who grew up, I guess, with some success but have not had success in a long time. The Cowboys are a franchise that have been really close and can't finish. It, is Staley the guy? I don't know, but that is one of the worst, if not the worst, playoff losses I've seen in a long time. Lance, do you have something on that? <laughs> I mean, br- brutal is what it was. To be honest, it's, it's, it's one thing to lose a playoff game, but to lose to the Jaguars, who admittedly are on the rise, but have had s- in such recent failure. I mean, they, they have yes. not been a good team for a long time. The Chargers were supposed to be you know, within like the top 10% of the AFC by now, and that loss just just put the icing on the cake of what a complete collapse that 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 franchise really is. And when you look at the Chargers in the AFC West, yeah, they're behind the Chiefs. But you expect to be behind the Way Chiefs. Way behind the Chiefs. Yeah, well, and everyone is, admittedly, besides maybe the Bills and the Bengals. But there was supposed to be some growth under Staley, and there just hasn't been. And if you look at the, the end, the bottom, the back half of every Chargers schedule, now they finished strong this year. They started poorly and finished strong this year to get to 10 wins, 10 and 7. But to lose like that on the road in the playoffs, you're not going to host any playoff games in the next five years with you, Patrick You Holmes think the, the anticipation, though, in Los Angeles is that the Chargers are even better than a 10 and 7 team at this point because they've got their quarterback of the future. Yes. They have what, what seems to be, out with, 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 with the exception of the tools the Chiefs have. The Chargers should be not necessarily a, a 1A, 1B with the Chiefs in that division, but definitely a strong number two. I'm talking like, you know, you yeah. know 12 and 5. You know, that, that should be the benchmark. But to sneak in at 10 and 7 and lose in the fashion they did, that's not a good sign. When they've had a bunch of injuries, but. So is everybody else. So is everybody else. It's the NFL. And Mike Williams and, and Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. And that underrated offense that they keep telling us about. And then the defense with some legitimate bona fide stars. They'll always be second, if not third, in that division. The Raiders finished strong too ish. I mean, they were awful this year. And then the Broncos with a new head coach, does Russell Wilson return to form? Or are they just 
them now. Well, the question I, I is, know. does Russell Wilson return, period? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question too. I don't know that they could trade him. I don't know. Uh, you you would be putting your franchise behind the eight ball pretty good if you gave away all your picks for Russell Wilson and didn't get anything back for him. Uh, some dumb GM would stake his job on it though. <laughs> Elway. Sorry. Oh, he already did that. Yeah. <laughs> too late. That. Uh, in the NFC, the 49ers look like the team to beat. Brock Purdy. I said on Friday would finally have an Iowa State moment where he made one bad play and set the team back. He did not. He has not. He's never lost. And I don't know that he will this year. Um, is this the conversation they've been waiting to have with Jimmy G and finding the new guy? Is is Brock Purdy going to push out Trey Lance and Jimmy G if he wins two more playoff games? How bad do you feel if you're Trey Lance right about now? My gosh. I mean, what can you do? I mean, he broke his ankle. What can yeah, you he do? Can't, I, mean, I mean, it's like the Wally Pipp situation. Yeah, it really Mr., is. except Mr. Irrelevant and not to the second coming is coming by. The 262nd pick should not be the guy leading a team to a Super Bowl in theory. In theory. <laughs> but here but, we are. But you've seen it before, right? Is Brock Purdy the next Tom Brady? No, probably not. But Shanahan is a really good coach. And really good coaches get really good play out of young quarterbacks on rookie deals. Pete Carroll did it with some guy named Russell Wilson, who's not been good since. Uh, Andy Reid did it with Patrick Mahomes. If you can capitalize on these rookie contracts, you don't have to pay anyone else. And you don't have to overspend on a quarterback to kind of hamstring the rest of your roster. I guess the question is, regardless of what happens in the playoffs this year, with the 49ers, does Brock Purdy go in as QB1 next year? Considering, you know, the fact that Trey Lance is there. I mean, obviously Garoppolo is going to wind up somewhere else. Yes. We're, of course, we were having that conversation last year. Uh, and the year before. <laughs> exactly. And the year before. And then he was in the Super Bowl that year. I, but, I, but, 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 but does he wind up as QB1 and, you know, the NFC's version of a Patrick Mahomes? Well, I don't know if he's the I NFC's mean, version I mean, but of Patrick throw, Mahomes. Throw it out there. I mean, the kid's not doing anything wrong right now. Right. And, again, is that the Shanahan system? If it is, who cares? I, I always think the system quarterback argument is stupid uh, because if you're a system quarterback, you're successful. Um, and you're in that system. The system's not changing. So why not go get a quarterback that fits your system? If, if Brock Purdy doesn't lose a playoff game, I'm not saying the 49ers don't lose, but if Brock Purdy doesn't go out and – spin around and throw the ball backwards like he did at Iowa State so often in a big moment, and the 49ers just get beat by the Eagles or the Giants or whoever it is, that would be gross. But I just didn't want to say, well, let's say Tampa Bay. If Tampa Bay comes back and they're in the Super Bowl because it's Tom Brady, if it's not Brock Purdy's fault that they lost a the playoff game, I do think he'll be number one on the depth chart next year, and they'll hand the keys to him. Is that a good idea? I don't know. But until he does something wrong, and now you have two quarterbacks on rookie deals in San Francisco, and you can pay anybody anything to go get a piece or two. I don't know what you need on offense. You don't really need anything. You could draft somebody. Maybe you go pay for an offensive lineman, or you just make that defense even better. Are the 49ers... They have to be the favorites in the NFC. I know Without the Eagles. I know the Eagles won the one seed, and and they are poised to do well in the playoffs. But the 49ers, to me, are the odds-on favorites, and I don't see one of those in the AFC. The Bills played awful. Josh Allen was terrible, but they won. Uh, and then. Joe Burrow wasn't very good either, but they beat the Ravens. And both of those teams are really bad matchups for Kansas City. Even though I think Kansas City's a better team, and I think Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback than the other two, it's really close and razor thin. Is this coming out of the any given Sunday argument? Anybody can be anybody else? In the AFC, yeah. Yeah. I don't think the Giants I don't think the Giants can no. punch up again. I think they won their playoff game. Dallas Dallas is an any given Sunday team for sure. Uh we'll see if they're an any given Monday team. Yeah. 
I think the Bucks are a bad matchup, especially with some of their healthy players coming back. Uh, Ryan Jensen's going to play his first snaps of the year. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. We'll see tonight. And this is also one of those things where you think in the back of your head, Tom Brady in the playoffs, doesn't matter what his record during the season was, he's in the playoffs. Tom Brady is 7-0 against the Dallas Cowboys all time. Tom Brady has 35 playoff wins. The Dallas Cowboys have 35 playoff wins. Yeah, do the math. <laughs> uh, it's painful math, but it's still math nonetheless. And I, I saw this coming a month and a half ago where the Cowboys were going to be the five seed because they were not going to catch the Eagles. Now, they got closer than I thought they would because Gardner Minshew played the last month. Um, but I, I just, I saw the Bucks finishing off that division and the Bucks started getting healthy. And then you get Vita Vea back who didn't play last week, but will play this week. You have an offensive lineman back. You, you have some options there. You're a, a road favorite, which is never good in the NFL, especially in the playoffs. You're giving manufactured reasons for Tom Brady to feel like an underdog. Um, it's a bad recipe. <laughs> it's a bad recipe He's for like a broken Michael Jordan. Cowboys don't fan. give him a reason to get keyed up. Yes. Don't ha- don't do it. Yeah. Hey, let's let's tell the guy who's never lost to this team he's the underdog at home. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, take another break. When we come back. We'll talk more about that Dallas Cowboys game. We'll dig into the numbers a little bit. We'll also talk more Big 12 basketball. It's Overreaction Monday on a Monday at the Talk 103.9 Arctic Air Studios. It's the Rob Bro Show. We'll be back after this. 103.9 News News Money Sports. We're already getting lines and props for uh, next week in the playoffs, but I was looking at some props for the Cowboys Bucks game tonight. Um, 244 and a half yards passing for Dak Prescott. The line for Tom Brady is 274 and a half. <laughs> Why Tom Brady's number is bigger than Dak's, I'm not real sure. Um, I don't. I wouldn't bet on either of those. Dak Prescott, sixteen and a half yards rushing. Interesting. Uh, Leonard Fournette, thirty-six and a half. Pollard and Zeke both at forty-seven and a half. I don't know that I would take any of those either. Uh, Zeke at seven and a half yards receiving. Tony Pollard, twenty-one and a half. Mike Evans, sixteen and a half. Hammer the over. CDs at seventy-five point five. That's a big number. But if you're going to be successful, you need CeeDee Lamb to have a big game. Uh, Noah Brown at 18.5. Is this going to be a game when Dak Prescott latches on to Noah Brown like he's prime Michael Irvin and throws it to him every six passes, every five passes, every three passes like he has? We'll see. Receptions, CeeDee Lamb at six, Mike Evans at five. Is this going to be a tight end game with Dalton Schultz at four? Julio Jones, two catches. Can he get over two? Zeke Elliott to score a touchdown, point five. Yes. Zeke Elliott scored like eight weeks in a row this year. I was trying to find the interception prop. Here it is. Oh, they don't give one to Dak. What a surprise. Because <laughs> that is easy money. Tom Brady thro- <laughs> to throw an interception, point five. I don't know. Can you get it? Can you get an interception? Uh, let's look at the sack prop. Cowboys total two and a half. Hmm. I don't know. If the this is one of those let's let's craft a game and bet the props based on that game. That's how you generally do prop bets. So let's craft a Cowboys win. Uh, Dak probably successful over two forty five. Tom Brady probably gets sacked more than two and a half games, so you would pair those two together. Zeke to score a touchdown, that would fit in there. 
I think over two and a half sacks is not unreasonable. Now, the Cowboys got pressure like no one else in the league the first three quarters of the season. They didn't get after it, there's no doubt. They did get after it. They have not gotten after it as much in the last month. And a lot of that is they got rid of the coverage pressure, the coverage sacks, because they got a bunch of corners and DBs hurt. Uh, And Micah Parsons just seemingly lost some juice down the stretch. Now, he's talking like he talks. He talks too much, in my opinion. But uh, another all-pro season from him and... He's saying, you know, the team is ready to step up. The defense is ready to step up. You're going to see us like you've never seen us. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Dallas Cowboys are 4-11 in their last 15 playoff games since they won a Super Bowl. The Bucs are 5-1 and one in their last six playoff games with Tampa Bay. Uh, I just, nothing about this game says the Cowboys will beat Tom Brady. Which... If you've listened to me for any length of time, you know I'm a subscriber to the do theory. Uh, But that is almost just too painful, right? The do theory to to rest your laurels on a 7-0 Tom Brady to finally be due to lose to the Cowboys. It's time! No. It's like saying the Washington Generals are due. Right. (laughs) Or the Texas Rangers are due. They haven't. Yes. Since 71, they've not won a championship. The Vikings are due. No, they lost this weekend. By the way... Who's the quarterback for the Vikings next year? Do they do they keep Kirk Cousins? Do they go all in? Uh, do they start a kind of a mini rebuild where you find so they don't have anybody on the roster? They're not going to trust Kellen Mond to finally be the guy. I don't even know if he's there anymore. Uh, he's probably not. And Kirk Cousins is g- good. He's yeah. almost one of those good as the enemy of greats kind of guys. He's too good, but he's not good enough. He's he's, a sta- he, he's, t- he's Tony Romo. He's the kind of guy that makes a four and thirteen team a seven and nine team. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, or a seven and nine team, a ten and seven team. Yeah, and that, but there's that there's that 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 hill you got to get over. <sighs> yeah, and that division was really bad this year, and the Vikings took advantage. Um. Is Kirk Similar. Cousins the Derek Carr of the NFC? I, yes. <laughs> and where's Derek Carr playing? I don't know about that one either. Maybe Minnesota. <laughs> uh, the Los Angeles Church of Christ somewhere. He's probably preaching. I, he was preaching this weekend. Um, I don't know what he was doing, but he was talking about the the burden of a franchise and then how Jesus also gives you a burden that you can carry. And it's like, okay, Derek, this is this is something you're doing, but I don't know if I can quite track that the burden of the Las Vegas Raiders is like Jesus, and you were Jesus in Las Vegas. That that just does not compute to me, Derek. He tried, though. A lot of people pray in Vegas, though, for various reasons. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of praying in Vegas for covers to hit and uh, numbers to go their way. God, if you just give me this red 13 right now, I'll never do anything else wrong. Just let me make this pass line bet. I'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> if you hit, a, If you let this parlay run... Um... Uh, Yeah, Uh, and there's lots of quarterback situations that are uneasy. One that seemingly is uneasy for Dallas Cowboys fans has been Dak Prescott this year. Um, And you are getting to a point where you could probably get away, but you're not there yet. And if you get rid of Dak Prescott, who are you bringing in? Do you make a move for Dak to Derek Carr? Do you make a move from Dak to Jimmy G? Because you have to go pay somebody. Is there somebody out there? Do you do you try to go after, I don't know, a, a Trey Lance or some other rookie that has been drafted that isn't going to play because they've made a decision on somebody else? Do you try to go get Bailey Zappi <laughs> from the Patriots because they're going to roll with Mac Jones? Do you try to go get some other rookie quarterback? I, I don't know, because... So many times in sports, people want to make the first move. Well, what's the next move? Oh, we have to get rid of Dak. He stinks. We got to get rid of Dak. Who's playing quarterback next year? If not Dak, who? If you want to get rid of Dak Prescott, text the next guy, 806-855-3712. 
Uh, and we'll see if that guy's out there because if Dak loses tonight to Tom Brady, again, there's no shame in losing to Tom Brady in the NFL playoffs. He's done it a lot. But if Dak wins tonight, does that render this whole conversation moot? Because that'll if, give them the playoff win that they, they've just missed out on for so long. Yeah, well, they've won some playoff games. Um, I, what does Dak have to That's a good conversation. What does Dak have to do to get the haters off of him? Uh, I think NFC Championship game. You have to. And if it's the Cowboys and the 49ers or the Cowboys and the Eagles in the NFC Championship. Well, it would be the Cowboys and 49ers next week. That's the problem. So oh, he's got to get true. past San Francisco first. So you'd have to beat San Francisco and the Eagles on the way. In San Francisco okay. and in Philadelphia. Well, I, I have faith that you can uh, make pro- Brock Purdy Purdy, but <laughs> nobody else has been able to. So I just I still just think of Iowa State's Brock Purdy, who was really good for stretches and then would spin around and throw the ball backwards against TCU, and you're just like, what are you doing? What, like, what are you doing? And lest we forget, Jonathan Garibay is a Dallas Cowboy. So not, next week. Not anymore. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he was a he Dallas was. Cowboy. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be a funny turn of events? Yeah. Hey, look. Happened you again. Sign back. Brett Maher gets hurt, and uh, you got to go sign the guy off the practice squad. It oh, happened man. again. That would be, uh, that would be some good, good action. And can you imagine the Cowboys, after 20 years of ineptitude, Beating the 49ers and the Eagles on their way to a Super Bowl. I mean, that's a pretty good storyline. If you're writing a script for the NFL, that's two, that's a playoff rivalry that you had in the 90s. And then your divisional rival, who is the one seed, and then you're the five seed, you get through on that end. And then to play Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen or Joe Burrow in the playoffs. The Bengals have never won a Super Bowl. The Bills have been to. Have they ever won one? No, no. They went to four straight. Four straight in the nineties, but yeah. So you'd be having a first time versus a long time there too. There's a lot of reasons why the NFL would script the Dallas Cowboys to go back to the Super Bowl, but uh, the NFL is not scripted, right? It seems, so we think. it seems scripted this Depends week, on the officiating. Yeah. Yeah, the officiating? The officiating, yeah. All right, let's take another break. When we come back, the final segment of the hour, we'll get back to the text line, too. More overreactions on an Overreaction Monday. It's the Rob Rose Show. Talk 103.9 News, Money Sports. Welcome back. Boy. Boy. Rob Rocho, Talk 103.9 News, Money Sports. This off the tax line, the Jags game was a tale of two halves. I actually YouTubed best games of two halves at halftime and couldn't really find anything and then forgot about the game and checked back with three minutes left and was surprised at how the game was actually a game of two halves. The Jacksonville Jaguars will make the playoffs the next three or four years, but is Trevor Lawrence, is he Joe Burrow? Can can he legitimately change that franchise? Because Joe Burrow legitimately changed the Bengals. Patrick Mahomes took the Chiefs, who are a really good team, and elevated them. Josh Allen came to a team that was pretty much complete. He got a lot better when Stefan Diggs came. Can Trevor Lawrence get a little bit more help and legitimately make Jacksonville a contender again? People forget. People forget the Jags were in the AFC Championship game and were a Danny Amendola touchdown away from going to the Super Bowl? I think. Uh, Correction, Rob, all math is painful. That's true. That is very true. Uh, Overreaction. After a minute and a half of listening to Rob, I now regret my Cowboys money line pick. (laughs) 
Uh, also, over under 45 and a half today. Who is the first touchdown scorer if the Cowboys have the ball first? Oh, man. Uh, under 45 and a half, I hope. If it's a shootout, I don't feel good. No. Uh, I would rather it be an under play. And Zeke, first touchdown score if the Cowboys score on their first drive. Zeke's props for carries is like 12 and a half. Uh, there's a prop on Brett Maher, one and a half field goals made. If you get a game total of three and a half field goals made, I would play that. Um, just if we're talking props. Uh, and I've I've really gotten more into prop play like uh, because it's legal in Texas. Uh, prize picks is always fun to to noodle around on. Um, if you look at it every day though, one eight hundred gambler whatever the number is. Uh, hire Kingsbury as offensive coordinator. Drop Dak. You can't just drop somebody. Uh, tr- I guess you can. Uh, trade for Zappy. <laughs> Start fresh and sling it next year. Also, keep Pollard and trade Zeke for a good draft package. Uh, you either play a lot of Madden, or I, I don't know. I, I don't know that all of that could be done in one offseason. And I don't know that it could be done well. Uh, Kingsbury, obviously available. Kind of. You would have to, <laughs> kind of. You have to fire Kellen Moore or hope he gets one of those open coaching jobs, which I think he will. Uh, eventually, I don't know if he does this year. He might be a little bit like the enemy and have five straight off seasons of interviewing for head coaching jobs before he gets one. Um, if you were Cliff Kingsbury, would you rather go to Dallas or Kansas City or the Rams and just have fun with your bestie uh, Sean McVay and live in Los Angeles? Uh, would you like to go to New England and learn under the tutelage of Belichick? You gotta wonder if it shines of off. Jobs. You gotta wonder if the uh, blooms off that rose, though. Belichick. Yeah. I mean, they almost made the playoffs with Matt Patricia calling plays. <laughs> I mean, point taken. I like. <laughs> I mean, yes, the shine is off, but it has been since Tom Brady left, and I think Mac Jones is a credible quarterback, not incredible, but just credible, serviceable, serviceable. Um. Bailey Zappi immediately came in and was able to read a defense, but they put Mac Jones in for a reason. I said Zappi's name earlier. I was mostly kidding. Um, do you, <laughs> again, if you want to get rid of Dak, give me a good plan to move on from him. And I don't know that Bailey Zappi, even with Cliff, is a great plan to move on from Dak. Outside of a game manager, there really isn't a whole lot that's going to be available this year. No, and and if you just want Dak to be a game manager, then call those plays. And Kellen Moore is a really good offensive coordinator to get a bunch of yards and to score some points, but he's not consistent in crunch time, and he's not good in short yardage. Two things you have to do if you want to win NFL games. And again, the Cowboys have won the most or the second most regular season games of the last two or three years under Mike McCarthy. Who cares? Like, you have to win in the playoffs. You have to be good in short yardage. You have to be good in crunch time. You can't let Dak run a draw with four seconds left in a playoff game when you're trying to get in field position, field goal position. Tampa Bay money line tonight. Uh, I'll take the under 45 and a half. Dak to throw an interception. <laughs> Brett Maher to kick some field goals. Uh, and I'll be pleasantly surprised if the Cowboys can pull it out. Well, that was a depressing end to a great show. We'll see you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. on The Raider Land with Ryan Hyde and myself. 11 a.m. tomorrow, that is a Tuesday. It's a two-word Tuesday, and then we'll have this show after that. I've been Rob Bro. I'll be Rob Bro. We'll see you then.
The views and opinions expressed by the participants on this Talk 1340 program are not necessarily the views of Talk 1340, its advertisers, staff, management, or Town Square Media.